Today, I think we should talk about something very important and something we should have probably spoke about a long time ago, and that is carbon monoxide. And I'm very grateful for all of the people who obviously are, pro are worried about me, or you call me a dumbass and I'm going to die because I'm running these di diesel heaters indoors with the exhausts venting indoors and I'll die because of the carbon monoxide. Now, in the UK and probably other countries, well, obviously the government ran adverts on the television warning you about the dangers of carbon monoxide, the silent killer, and you'll go to sleep at night and you'll die in your sleep. Which is true, because that's when you will die, is when you're, in it, when you're asleep, because you don't notice you're being poisoned by carbon monoxide. Now, in the workshop and my house, I have these. This is a Fire Angel. Uh, which version is it? Oh, this isn't sponsored or anything, by the way. This I just happen to have Fire Angel ones. So this is the model C09D. Uh, I have one of these in the workshop, and I have one of these in the house. Now, on there, you can see there's the zero parts per million there. But do you see behind it, there's this scale. So this is, this is, this is the important bit, really, um, is time. So it's your exposure over time. Uh, I think this starts reading at 10 parts per million and not lower. Uh, and the other uh, carbon monoxide sensor we use for tuning is just this, the cheap one you get off uh, eBay. But it works, it does the same job, it shows you carbon monoxide. And allow me to pull the snippet from the instruction manual on the Fire Angels. It kind of it does help a bit with the explanation. Right, so this is the bit that is in the Fire Angels instruction manual tape thing, where it tells you about levels of carbon monoxide in the parts per million. So, 35 parts per million is the maximum allowable concentration for continuous exposure for a healthy adult in any 8 hour period, as recommended by the Occupational Safety and Health Administration. So if I was running any of these heaters, it, they could run away at 35 parts per million for 8 hours before I would possibly suffer any slight ills or any signs of um, carbon monoxide poisoning. So, 200 parts per million, slight headache, fatigue, dizzy, dizziness and nausea after 2-3 to three hours. So that's 200 parts per million. Now at uh, 400 parts per million, you will get frontal headaches within one to two hours and it's life-threatening after three hours. So that's when you die in your sleep. So when there is enough carbon monoxide, let's say, say 400 plus parts per million, you don't notice it because it's clear, colourless, smellless, tasteless. You go to your bed, you obviously don't notice you've got a headache because you're asleep in your bed, and then you die, and you die in your sleep. But these heaters, even when they're tuned not that brilliantly, like if you're tuning them properly, you're aiming for, well, you're aiming for no parts per million, but anywhere up to 10 parts per million is an okay tune. So even at 10 parts per million, you could run it 8 hours, well, actually, well, 8, 10, like 16, you could probably run it the whole day, and your exposure to carbon monoxide would probably be the same as if you were walking next to a busy motorway. Oh, ooh, it does have an 800. There's 8, 800, I'll go back. 800 parts per million, dizziness, nausea and convulsions within 45 minutes, unconscious within 2 hours, and death within 2-3 hours. So 800 parts per million is the one that would kill you in your sleep. And again, it just says a bit like if you're, preg if you're pregnant or if you have health conditions, obviously your mileage will vary. But, so that's, that's the thing with, that I want to stress with the carbon monoxide is, it's time and exposure. It's the same with anything. It would, if, if it was cyanide gas, you can breathe in a little bit of cyanide gas and not die. But if you breathe in a lot of cyanide gas, you'll die. I might be exaggerating with cyanide gas, but the principle's the same. It's, it's the amount you're exposed to. So what we're going to do now is fire up these uh, diesel heaters. Oh, we'll go. Easy to fire up that one because it plugs in the wall. Might need the power supplier to fire that one up. I'm going to turn them on, run them, and set the fire angel where we can see it and the other one. And we will look at how many parts per million we get from running these. Let's set up and do that. Right, so hopefully you can hear the two diesel heaters running. They are running at 
full power at the moment and on the shelf there are were two carbon monoxide detectors uh, sitting in front of the power supply and on the left you can see the fire angel is reading 12 parts per million it's not alarming there is no noise coming from it and the cheap one is reading about 30 parts per million oh okay and the uh, fire angels now come up to match it so the cheap yellow one it reads a lot faster than the fire angel one because the fire angel one's going to have a 10 year battery so it's, just, it's only going to take a reading i think it's every minute it takes a reading whereas the well, the yellow one i think it's every second it takes a reading so as you can see 30 parts per million so they're about they're pretty close to each other but again still no alarm because of the time factor now the display the bar display on the fire angel will go up because that, that actually displays your exposure over time so you get more and more and more bars to fill up until it goes off in alarms right we've been running for a while now and well anyone that's interested the fire angel says 62 and the cheap one says 63 64 so I'm going to guess they're pretty accurate if they're vaguely the same with each other. We're both reading 62 at the moment. But again, as I say, it's been a while now and we've still not actually been running long enough with enough carbon monoxide for it to show up in the register or set the alarm off. And it's not just diesel heaters, obviously, that produce carbon monoxide. Anything that burns, any sort of fuel, such as my uh, fireball heater here, which entirely vents the hot exhaust gas inside emits carbon monoxide. Same as if you had a wood burning stove or a color gas fire or a part of those paraffin lampy fiery things, any of those things has the possibility to emit carbon monoxide if they are not working correctly or even in normal operation they might emit some carbon monoxide. So let's see how much uh, carbon monoxide this fireball style heater it emits. So we've already got, well, 30 or 40 down this end of the workshop. Let's fire it up. So the fireball heaters have actually got a, well that's a pretty really clean burn, but then again they do throw in a huge amount of air, so they're running, well basically as, as lean as it'll go without, without it going out. So they run really well, but again, they still emit carbon monoxide, and they are designed to run indoors, granted, in a ventilated space. We've been running and filming for a little while now, and uh, the red diesel heaters just in its final cooling off stage, the yellow one's cooled off and we've still got 46 parts per million but at no stage during all of my filming the fireball heater and waffling on while these are talking and doing my filming has this ever shown any segments on the display or beeped in any way shape or form you can see this one's going the flashy green in the background but it does that I think anything over 10 and which is, is fine and as we can see they're well if i stop moving it they're well they were before i picked it up they were showing about the same number which is good because that means this is relatively accurate and good for tuning but we can turn you off just now and i'm, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna stress this as best i can if you have a heating device of any kind that burns any kind of fuel get a fucking carbon monoxide alarm I will not stress this enough. Whew, it's just lit up in the background. So we've now we've now done it. Wait, hold on, let me pull you in a bit for this. We've lit up one bar. So just now, I, 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 tell you, I can't do the maths, but perhaps someone can with the exposure over time levels, how long it would take to fill this up at certain levels. But that's what it's doing. If this was to stay at 44, it would take into account how long it's been at it and fill it up and then sound the alarm. But at the moment, because they're turned off, the count will now go down, and so that'll change the time it takes to fill in the graph. Where was it? I think I was swearing at you to 
just uh, to make a point, yeah. If you burn fuel of any kind, I don't care if it's in your workshop, your garage, your shed, caravan, workshop, log cabin, whatever it is, if it's logs you're burning, diesel, waste oil, animals, hair, old clothes, get a fucking carbon monoxide alarm. This will stop you dying in your sleep. Okay, that's it. That's that's your lesson. That's that's me telling. I've done my bit. I'm, we can go back to just uh, normal me swearing at you. So this workshop is six meters by three meters by two meters, and it's relatively uh, well sealed. There's, it's not hermetically sealed. It's not airtight, but it's not. We'll call it ventilated, which is why if I'm when I'm running the heaters and that in here for testing, I put the extractor fan on, so we're continuously swapping out the air that's in here. So you're drawing in fresh air and you're replacing uh, any carbon monoxide with fresh air because you breathe out carbon monoxide at the same rate that you breathe it in. It's the same, your body treats it the same as carbon dioxide. You know what I mean? You're just breathing it out. So your level, your exposure level, so say if, if you're breathing it in for half an hour, it'll take you about half an hour to expel it all back out again. Right, so the, the bar graph display has now gone back down because we're... Uh, Obviously, the carbon monoxide is uh, leaving the um, uh, workshop. If you ever hear your carbon monoxide alarm beeping, uh, first of all, leave. Like, don't go, oh, maybe the batteries are, are uh, flat. It. Leave first. Get, get out of the area that you might die in and then stand outside and go, Ah oh, no, wait, it's just doing the chirp for it's got a kind of flat battery. Worry about that after. If you hear it making a noise, leave the area. Seek fresh air. I can't stress that enough. Get out of the place where the carbon monoxide is. Uh, secondly, well no, it's not what I suppose, secondly, uh, buy a reputable brand of carbon monoxide lamp. Do not go on AliExpress, etc. and buy uh, a carbon monoxide lamp. Don't rely on this as your carbon monoxide alarm. Yes, it appears to be accurate, and yes, it does work, but do you trust uh, eBay, AliExpress, Chinese Specials, or an actual established brand that you can sue, etc., etc., and can be sued if things go horribly wrong? Because the the requirements of testing these is really, really, really strict. That brings us to the question then: Should you run your diesel heater? indoors unvented well no of course you shouldn't no i don't mean no, of course you shouldn't and what i mean is you should if you can always vent the exhaust outside that's whatever it is your wood burning stove your oil fired burner your whatever it is that burns fuel yes you should if you can always vent the exhaust gas outside can you run them inside well yes you can you can run them inside as long as they are A, fairly well tuned, and B, that should really be the other word. A, you have a working carbon monoxide alarm that you trust and you know to be accurate and working. And B, you have a fairly well tuned heater that can run for extended periods of time without generating enough carbon monoxide to poison you. Because let's face it, you could run it for the hours. I've just. Uh, I just turned the other carbon monoxide alarm back on. Thank you, but be quiet just now. Yeah, so you can run your diesel heater indoors with the exhaust venting inside the same way as you would run a fireball diesel heater. You need to be mindful of the carbon monoxide and either ventilate every now and again or have it running in a ventilated space where you've got fresh air coming in. But you can do it. The one thing that I will not run indoors. Let me show you. A generator, a petrol powered generator. Do not run these indoors. I ain't fucking kidding, not even a little bit. I'm gonna show you why right now. So I'm gonna put a carbon monoxide alarm right there. The other one can stay up there. We're gonna start this bad boy up. Uh, run, economy, off. Fifth, baft, boff. 
Right, so at the moment we are 27 parts per million. Start the timer as soon as this thing starts running. Did I turn it on? Wait, where's the engine switch? Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Bye to where we are. On. Need a little bit more choke. Okay, that perhaps wasn't as dramatic as I was expecting. Then again, this is a newer generator. The last time I ran a generator indoors, the carbon monoxide alarm went off its tits within a few minutes because basically uh, these are generating a lethal amount of carbon monoxide. As I said, thank you, uh, other non carbon. Oh. Yeah, so that th there's the beeping noise that the carbon monoxide has reached a Lethal level, and I should probably uh, turn the fan on and open the door. Uh, one moment, please. So this is my old carbon monoxide alarm, uh, a kiddie one, still a uh, brand name. It just doesn't have a display to show you the, uh, you know, the amount of car carbon monoxide in the atmosphere. So I've opened the door and turned the fan on, and it's uh, going back to being quiet. So th it was obviously this one that the the previous generator had set off. After a few minutes of running, it sets this off. The Fire Angel, obviously, because it's still exposure based. We've not quite had enough uh, to upset this one as badly, but we would have got there if we'd have kept running. But this one's now beeping again. So uh, we'll uh, we'll finish here because this is a good place to finish. And as it, oh, another note: why have one carbon monoxide detector when you can have also a backup carbon monoxide uh, detector as well? Because more carbon, carbon monoxide detectors, more better. Carbon monoxide and smoke alarms, you can get them as a together unit now, so you can know if you're in a, a camper van, or, well, a camper van, caravan, workshop, anything like that. You can get combined smoke and carbon monoxide and all interlinked and all whatnots, but as I said before, and I'm going to stress it again, if you're heating by burning fuels, get a fucking carbon monoxide alarm and the other point of, can you run a diesel heater indoors? You can, you shouldn't, you should try and invent the exhaust if you can. But if you have to run it indoors and you have to have the exhaust in, get a carbon monoxide alarm on, and even a test mirror and tune your heater to get as little carbon monoxide as you can. And basically, be safe, but safe safety third, but in this case, safety first. Get the fucking carbon monoxide alarm and then you can run it indoors. And then if it beeps, you know to stop and turn it off. Any questions, comments, anything else like that, please leave them down below and I'll try my best to answer them or you know the drill. As always, thanks for watching.